Hey guys, you know, I've been talking a lot in community posts about misconceptions about love and about the heart and about Christians having a new heart and things like that. And, you know, this is, a, this is going to be a pretty quick video and it's not just going to be a teaching video, but I'm going to give a little bit of my testimony. Um, you know, many of you already know that I was saved. I heard the true gospel and believed, put my trust in Jesus and believed it. When I was nine years old, um, and so I've been a born again, new creation in Christ, you know, all this time, I'm 51 years old now. And, uh, so I've, I've walked through a lot of things and, uh, um, a lot of different, I guess what you could call heart conditions, right? And. Something I noticed is that there was always the witness of that s the spirit in me that agreed with the gospel. Even though I could hear lies and get tossed and fro and get tossed to and fro in my mind with those lies with false doctrine and and accusations from the devil and all of those things. There was definitely that witness of the Spirit speaking truth to me. Now, I could choose to agree with those things that I knew lined up with the Word of God and with, you know, with the gospel. Or I could listen to man and I could listen to the accusations of the devil and I could listen to my own self-condemnation. It was my choice, right? That's why we're told to renew our minds as born-again believers in the Word. And the mind and the heart are, are the same. That's part of our inner man, our, the seat of, our, of our, uh, our, th our thoughts, our understanding, our will, our emotions, right? Um, so when we, at the moment, we're born again and we choose to believe the gospel, our, our hearts are, you know, at that moment as as we believe in faith our hearts are softened towards the lord in belief in choosing to believe the gospel we're coming to him in faith and that faith in the lord softens our heart towards him right because i was looking up what a hardened heart means here uh in the bible whenever there's bible verses that talk about a, a hardened heart and um uh, it is. I've made a, a video not too long ago about how it's par possible for believers to kind of harden their heart towards the Lord. A heart that is soft is a heart that is pliable towards towards the truth, towards the, the Holy Spirit, towards the Word of God, and allowing Him to change your mind and to come in agreement with Him, to allow Him to wash and renew your mind in the truth, right? That's a softened heart. A hard heart is one where we stubbornly turn away from the truth and mind the things of the flesh, right? And I did that for much of my life. I know that I was walking according to my flesh and not according to faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ as a born again a believer for decades, okay? And I know how ugly my flesh and my understanding and my emotions are. You know, I am not proud of myself. I, I'm selfish, I'm mean, I'm judgmental, um, I, you know, I self-hate, uh, I'm incapable of real love towards others, you know, unselfish love, um, <clears throat> all of those things, even as a born-again believer, I saw many of those things manifest in my life because I was being controlled by my old man instead of reckoning or agreeing with God with a softened heart towards him and his truth. I didn't continue. See, I wasn't renewing my mind in the water. I was in the water, washing in the water of the word and renewing my mind. I was being conformed more to the world 
And that world includes religion and self-righteousness. And for most people, I put on a pretty good show in my flesh. You know, as a churchgoer, I taught, me and my husband taught children's Sunday school for 17 years, you know. Um, But I was literally being controlled, you know, any, any uh, goodness that was being shown outwardly there was mostly just me trying to do good, to represent the Lord well. But in my, in my heart, I was being controlled by uh, my, my flesh and my fleshly desires. And I was a slave to those things in that I was letting them control me because I was not renewing my mind and my heart in the word. And so it wasn't until it was when things had really got come to just rock bottom with myself and with my husband and with my marriage that I, I was just desperate and I did not like the person I was and how I was hurting everybody around me, you know. And I just knew there had to be something more. And I just started seeking the Lord, crying out to the Lord, reading the Bible, uh, praying. And, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this, but I know that I can't be the way that I am. I'm miserable. And that's what sin will do to you. It, it, It steals, kills, and destroys. It takes you for a ride, and it does what it wants with you. And it really hurts when you know that it shouldn't be that way because you're a child of God and you've believed on on the Lord, right? And you know there's got to be something more. But, you know, just like most people, I went to these churches, um, and you hear a lot of false doctrine in churches. You know, a Galatianized mix of law and grace, and... People tell you different things, and even your own thoughts condemn you. When you sin and you can't seem to get free of the sin, and you start believing that you can't go to the Lord, and He's He's unhappy with you, and you may not even make it to heaven for all you know, and you know, you can't walk in a way that's pleasing to the Lord. And why are you hurting everybody around you? And you, you don't want to be like that, but you can't seem to stop it. And then you get angry. You know, I got angry at God, uh, like it was His fault. And until I started hearing sound doctrine taught, you know, even my parents who are believers, I have no doubt that they're born again, used to speak against doctrine and say that it doesn't matter. Like, all you got to know is that you love Jesus and you believe Jesus and we don't need to make all these separations, you know, uh, and distinctions in the word. But I was, the reason I was so miserable was the churches they, you know, took me around to and I saw these things and I got so confused about what it, what the gospel was and what it meant to believe. And, you know, I had no idea that how to grow up in the Lord. I thought there, there was no such thing. Basically, you just got saved and then tried to do the best you could, you know, uh, to, and that's again, Galatianized teaching and it, it didn't work for me obviously, and I, it doesn't work for anyone because the best you can do is an outward show in the flesh. And, uh, and then you've got all these secret sins, you know, that maybe only the people closest to you might know. And I'm a terrible person. I really am. But God, you know, and he through no effort of my own whatsoever. Once I came into sound teaching and sound doctrine, I sought the Lord. And as I began to press into him, I looked in all the wrong places and listened to the wrong people for a long time. And I jumped on the rapture date set train and the false prophecy train and the dreamer train and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Seeking him, but he still was working all that for my good. And through that, he brought me even further to the end of myself because when I, w- I was like, okay, I'm really making an effort now. I'm really making an effort now. And God's going to be pleased with me because I am trying my darndest to press into him. Well, he sure, he sure was receiving me, but he was trying to show me I was going about it the wrong way. And once I 
finally heard some good teaching and began looking at the word for myself and studying and realizing, you know what? Yes. And all these things I'd heard and read in the word all my life were suddenly making sense because they were in context. They weren't uh, contradicting each other. And I could say, oh, yes. And the spirit within me that was bearing witness to the truth was going, yes, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. And I was getting set free step by step by step. And I still am. And I'm still learning. I'm still pressing into him. And I'm getting set free step by step by step. And through no effort of my own, other than just daring to believe and stand in the truth of who I am in Jesus Christ, that those sin habits, that power that sin had over my life that made me think that I had to obey it and there was no way I could get away from it, fell off of me. And it, I wasn't looking at the sin anymore. And I'm, I'm still not. I don't have a lot of, uh, I don't, so what bothers me when people say, we got to struggle with sin as a Christian, we struggle. No, Jesus took care of the sin. It's gone as far as he dealt with it at the cross. It is gone as far as east is from the west. Our job is to believe. If we turn and wrestle our sin, we're going to lose. We're going to lose every time. Um, resisting the devil is resisting those lies he tells you that tells you you're not who you are in Christ and Jesus Christ didn't pay it all and um, that you, you, you have to obey sin because you don't. You don't have to. And if you do, and we all do on a pretty regular basis, we're, we fall, we falter, we're still in this flesh. Uh, we look away from the sin and look to Christ. We get up and dust dust off and we just keep going. We got to know that he is always pleased with us based on the basis of Christ. We are always his child. We got to have that assurance of our unwavering salvation and the love of God that we can never escape. And, and know how loved and pleasing we are to the Lord. And not in any way did we deserve that. And that we are richly, richly blessed in the Lord. And it is amazing the things that come out of my heart and the way I respond in my family, with my kids, with my husband, in the workplace, in church, because of changes that he's, he, it's not, I'm being transformed by the Lord to grow up in him and have him be on display in my life. Not some facade. There's nothing good in me, nothing good in my flesh still. I still have that flesh. I can, I can at any time give in to that flesh and harden my heart to when the Lord speaks truth to me and I say no and I give into that flesh and my flesh never gets better okay my old man never gets better and yet I know that everything good in me is Christ and the only thing good in me is is Christ and the only way I can ever hope to have to grab hold of Christ and be found in him is by faith in the gospel. So really that's that's the answer. Uh, it like I said the only so-called heart posture that matters is a heart that is soft towards being and willing to be renewed in the word, in the gospel, by Christ, rather than believing the enemy's lies. And that is beneficial for you and everyone around you. And um, it, again, it's not about cultivating virtues. There's, there's some verses I've seen people use where it says, you know, make every effort to add to your faith. And then it lists all these, you know, a few different things. But that is talking about... 
um, a virtuous pursuit of Christ, to be found in him, to have more of him. It's not like you need to put these things on top of or apart from your faith. We have the faith, uh, we walk in faith by the Spirit in those things that those virtues cannot be established apart from Christ, right? Um, and, I, and I know this, you know, experientially, because like Paul, like it, my, my heart, my inner man really, really wanted to be. And there were times when I was just on fire for the Lord, man. I mean, and there were some times he used me even during all those years when I was most of the time walking according to my flesh in, in religious self-righteousness and in, in fear and doubt and all those kinds of things. Uh, there were times in spite of myself, he was still able to use me for good and bring people to the Lord. And, uh, you know, our, our Sunday school ventures, I remember even then when I was, you know, we taught kids, me and my husband taught kids Sunday school for a long, many, many years at the local Baptist church. And I, uh, the problem was I, I remember thinking to myself a lot of times, well, I'm maybe the Lord is pleased with me because I'm doing this. <laughs> you know, I had no idea about standing in, in Christ and him alone. And he was pleased with me just because I had a heart of thanksgiving for him saving me. That would be enough. Right. But I was, I felt so unloved, you know, I felt unloved my whole life. And there's a lot of reasons from that starting from my childhood, but, um, I felt like such a failure. And I am a failure, dadgummit. I'm a stinking failure. But the Lord isn't. And now because of him, I'm victorious. Because he's victorious. He's given me freely as a gift the victory. And all I can do is receive it as a gift. And somehow even um, I believe that he used me in the children's ministry in spite of myself because I was in fear and trembling before the Lord. And I was so careful. I was so scared of leading children astray that I was very careful about what I spoke and uh, how I was around those children and anything that came out of my mouth that I uh, was unsure of that I didn't want to stumble anyone. And there were times I was able to lead little children to the Lord with a simple gospel. I just remembered how I came to the Lord, right? So praise God for that. But I'll tell you what, when I did finally hear the truth, and that's why I say I think there's a difference between a confused, uh, struggling believer and someone who, who is more like a wolf, you know, that is, I never in all those years set myself out to disprove the gospel and to take someone else's faith and join the Lord and assurance away from them. Like some of these people, uh, these pastors and on YouTube that make their ministry all about putting fear of losing salvation and, and, and the burden of the law back onto believers, and they are stumbling people. You know, they are causing so much harm. And so I just want you guys to know that the reason I do this channel is just to share the joy and the peace and the victory and the liberty and freedom and, and life that I could never have apart from Christ. And and that assurance that's there all the time, that comfort. You know, the Holy Spirit is our comforter. Oh, he, he, he testifies of Christ. And he tells us that we are his and that we have eternal life because of what he did. And there's nothing more comforting than that. And I've noticed I've gone through, I don't share all my trials and stuff here out here on YouTube personal trials, but I've gone through some pretty major stuff, guys, in the last few years, and I'm like, where is this peace coming from? Where is this stability? 
it's like I really am ain't just I have this anchor this rock that I am firmly attached to <laughs> and I don't I don't get swayed the way that I used to and it's because I've uh I'm allowing the Lord to renew my mind because I have nowhere else to go you know he is the bread and water he he is the one with the words of life he's my everything and where else would I go? Because every time I try to go somewhere else, it leaves me empty and unsatisfied and and lacking. And uh, there's just no true joy. And, and I, can, I can relax and be real with people and relate with people in my real life around me and get along and not be judgmental anymore and love them and, and see them the way the Lord sees them. And... Uh, Man, ugh, so much less stress. And it's real. It's not anything I'm manufacturing. It's not anything I'm saying. Colleen, you got to be more loving. If I did that, I would fail. I can't do anything. I suck at trying to be and do, okay? I can't. I don't have it in me, but now Christ is in me. And the Bible tells me that the way to access Christ to have him be lived out in, in me is by faith. And that faith is in his finished work and who I am in him. That's all. All right. I went on a lot longer than I meant to. But I want you to know that I really love you guys. I really, really do. And anytime I contend or argue not only do I really wish or want those people that are being stubborn and hard-hearted to see the truth, you know, and repent, change their minds, soften their heart, and let the Lord renew them in Him. But I also, because I don't want anybody that's listened to me, that I'm blessed with having here fellowship with me and, and eating at the table with me and listening to me because the Lord's allowed me to do this for the time being. I don't want them to be swayed by these lies. The lies, and the reason is because they reap corruption. They sow to the flesh and they reap corruption and pain and hurt and heartache. All right, love y'all.